Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. This video was scheduled to start at 9, but circumstances pretty much beyond my control warrant that it be done earlier. So I apologize to anyone who misses it live. I know a lot of people prefer to watch these videos live, and I apologize. I hope that all the people who are coming on to the live now could do me a big favor and share it as far and as wide as you could so that those who are waiting for it at nine would know that we had to start earlier and again I apologize profusely so please share the video and we're gonna start a conversation a contemptible turn of events I asked I asked all of the followers or as many of them as possible to guide me tonight because I I found myself angry this morning and I asked the members of the Progressive Empowerment Party and the people who follow me to guide me should I should I do a calm and measured response or should I just drop it hot because I could play both sides of that card that pack of cards and everybody asked that we demonstrate that we can manage the situation without too much emotion. I wanna say right now, before starting into it, I'd like to ask, and I'm gonna share it to a couple of groups, and I'd like to ask everybody, please. Now, 55 million people don't share it to Stand Up TNT alone. Eh? Share it to every other group, share it on your page first, share it everywhere else. This morning was not supposed to be the story. The story was yesterday evening, the Progressive Empowerment Party was running its first um, political documentary um, on CNC3, which was a big first for us and for them. And so everybody was waiting with bated breath to see what would happen, how it would go, how the video would come across because the video was highlights of our second year anniversary and it was it was it, it was important to note that it was a second year anniversary of a party that benefited from no media exposure whatsoever none and to a lot of people they think that that's all right that's easy to do but it's not it's not. What we've accomplished here in these two years is nothing short of miraculous. Somebody tell me today, Philip, you all are a phenomenon. What you all were able to do without media is nothing short of miraculous. And to make it to two years, we made it to two years and we thought it's time, don't forget to be sharing the video, eh? we thought it's time to be going and if the media wouldn't give it to us for free, we'll pay the media. So that broadcast that you saw cost some thousand dollars well. And we had to film it, which cost some thousands well, pay to edit it, again some thousands, and then to broadcast it. And we do that without having any deep pocket finances. I'm going to do my endeavor best to keep my cool, but I'm very upset now. And, and you'll understand why I'm upset here, eh? because a lot of players in this thing are people that I know long and I know well. And, and what happened this morning? Now, we go back a little bit. It was supposed to be a changing of posture between us and Guardian Media. Open hands going forward, we spend our money, we bring our video, we broadcast it, amazing response. I mean, I mean amazing response to the point where everybody who doubted that this progressive empowerment party was a real political alternative to the madness of the PNM and UNC, it underlined it. Because in one 30 minute video, we were able to show a huge crowd turn out 
for the opening of an office, the Progressive Empowerment Party South Regional Headquarters and celebration the second anniversary, big crowd, they were able to see many people, not a one-man party, many people, many intelligent, um, committed, civic-minded, patriotic persons speaking. And you know what's the rule in the PEP? I wonder if you all noticed it last night. You noticed that not one person was allowed to read. Keisha Lewis gave herself some notes on her phone and I let her get away with that one time only. In the Progressive Empowerment Party, if you cannot speak off the cuff, you don't understand what you're talking about. You don't need notes. If you need notes, you don't know what you're talking about. And that's the fact and that's the truth. So we make sure that our people are so knowledgeable and informed that when they come to speak to you, they're speaking from the heart. And that's what they saw. Trinidad saw a glimpse of of, of hope and then I had a couple minutes to present we have a hundred policies in a book called reboot the Republic out of which myself and Suzanne Joseph took 21 why 21 because typesetting it on the page that we printed only could hold 21 and as, as, as random as that, for a while it was 20, it became 21. We have a lot more. They're copying and pasting these, that's all right. But out of the 21 policies that we've put forward, I, was only, I only had the time to go in-depth on one, education. And I thought there are some critical um, issues to the public, water, public health, jobs, food independence, education, home ownership, governance, that I thought we have a lot of rallies to have. We have four more offices to open, regional headquarters. After those, we have cottage meetings, smaller satellite offices to open. So I thought, instead of trying to give you too much information at one time, and give you detailed information, like we do on the radio, like we do on the radio, Mondays and Wednesdays, 9 to noon, three unscripted hours. We deal with the public national security, and as you know, we are the ones that bring that to the national mm -hmm. conversation. So anyway, the video aired. But when the video aired, they had also called for an interview. Guardian Media Limited wanted an interview with me with me guardian media wanted an interview with the political leader of the party hema rankisun said no she blocked me from coming on the morning room now we could have stood our ground and said well we'll have nothing to do with guardian media but this is not a one-man party so if you're going to test the water Let's go in the deep end. As the issue was the opening of the South office, we sent the chair of the South constituencies, Michelle Davis. And as we were also discussing the issue of the party's second anniversary, sent the chairman of the party, Felicia Holder. So you had two capable. Now, I see some of you all Shoot your load today, get excited to see two capable spokespersons for the Progressive Empowerment Party besides me. You're not gonna panic them. We have about 40 as a guesstimate. They like numbers, and we're gonna touch on that because they like numbers. How much people is there? How much members you have? But what you're not giving us is the opportunity. You see, the PNM came to office as a one-man band. Dr. Ad hominem, Johnny Sukaran, AKA Faris al Rawi, used to be on every show. Nobody else. Kate Rowley was purging the party of the Manningites. And that's their business. That's their business. But this party is not that. And every single opportunity you give us, and I bring to the radio show, as many times as possible, members of the party to talk to the public. 
to show you the length, the breadth, the depth of the progressive empowerment part. They got a sneak peek. Because what they're going to see when we open on, on the 23rd of March in 10th Avenue, what I said in my speech at the opening, I said, they call it a one-man party. What you've just seen was the south piece of the PEP and not the full south piece. Those are the caretakers. We have team members involved in all manner of things. I don't want to get too sidetracked. So Hema didn't want me on the show. No problem. Felicia, as chairman, Felicia Holder, and Michelle Davis, who is also deputy party organizer. So she wears two hats, and politically, she's the shadow MP for San Fernando West. So she could talk to you about anything. Felicia Holder will be a candidate for the Progressive Empowerment Party. She is the chairman of the party, and she's in charge of finance. So she could talk to you about all manner of things. You had in the studio two senior, you acknowledged it, executive members of the Progressive Empowerment Party who could have spoken to you about policy, about governance, about Trinidad and Tobago. But that's not what was discussed. You see, Hema Ramkisun is not the only media bully in Trinidad and Tobago. They're a little clique, a little inbred clique of some nasty people. And a lot of people waking up to it now. I just watched Josh Surtees from the United Kingdom spit out news there in the most reprehensible way and call them out as a propaganda organ of the government. That's what Guardian Media Limited is. And that's what that's what Massa Media is express, TV6. I tell Fazir twice a year is give me 20 minutes. And I just have to take those 20 minutes and go back to social media. And get a quarter million views. As we literally have to make, we have to get blood from a stone and we cool with it. We have financiers, all of our members are our financiers who are pooling funds. Our mission is to get the information to the public, to the media. You're going to charge us for it? No problem. We will pay you. But Hema Ramkisun found herself this morning in the role of having to interview the Progressive Empowerment Party. And her and the people who text her questions. Because if you've ever watched Hema do an interview, or if you ever follow the pattern of Hema's interview, if you look, it's a zig and a zag. It's not like for zero talking to you, you know. Hema, when the camera is not on Hema, anybody who's ever been interviewed will tell you, and I could tell you, because I was one of the people who used to send her questions. Hema used to be receiving questions from people. So she comes across as knowledgeable, but what she's really doing is reading who sends her what to say and what to ask. She's really not that smart. But to the Sabka group, she does the job. Today, I got angry and exposed who Hema Rankisun really is, only because she had an opportunity today to talk to the Progressive Empowerment Party completely disconnected from me. She could have dealt with that. She could have shown herself to be a credible journalist with integrity, a talk show host who had guests and talk to her guests about issues that matter to the guests and the country. But bully that she is. You see, I bullied her back today. A couple of people jump out themselves and I had to put them in the place. Because I would not have had to respond the way I responded today had she not done what she did first. And I am not going to be one of those people who are told that let them do it, Phil. We see it, you take the high road. 
Miss me with that bullshit. That don't work in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago need to see that you're strong. That you have belly. And if it's one thing they know now, they have nobody I wouldn't go against. They have nobody I wouldn't stand up to. I am willingly thrown down the gauntlet. We'll debate all. Faris, Munilal, Kamala, Rowley, bring all at the same time. No problem. There is nobody that is a sacred cow in this country. But Hema this morning, bully that she was, decided that the two women who was in her studio, she was going to use them as punching bags to beat me. She was attacking them. She was attacking me in some thinly veiled attacks because she knew, she knew that her bosses spoke with me yesterday because her bosses spoke with her. And she knew that we were trying to go forward with a new relationship. So she had to come close and she, she was assuming that I would take those side swipes and let it go, but not anymore. I am not anybody's Good Friday bubbly. As Wayne Sturge say, if you come in the gael, take more. Don't come to share wood and break it when you get wood back. So you had, and I want to tell Trinidad again what upset me further. Today was Felicia Holder's last day at work, a decade with Massey. Let's come to a close. For whatever reason, it's come to a close. And today's her last day. So her mind was preoccupied with that. And I asked her when I found out that Hema was blocking me and I didn't want any confusion, especially as we had just launched, we had just aired our video. I asked Felicia if she would represent us. And I asked Michelle if she would go with Felicia. Felicia, on her last day of work, changed her mindset overnight to go and deal with this. Because she's that kind of person. Michelle, even worse. And this pissed me off. Michelle lives Cedrus. For Michelle to have reached CNC tree for 6 o'clock, Michelle had to be on the road from 3 o'clock this morning. That means Michelle had to have been awake and bathing and dressing at 2 o'clock in the morning to come to CNC tree to represent the Progressive Empowerment Party and the people of Trinidad and Tobago and to have a conversation because she is another one like, yeah, Phil, no problem. I have never seen people like the Progressive Empowerment Party members who are so willing to put aside and sacrifice. I never, I'd hardly ever get, let me make a call and call you back. You see, all right, Phil, we there. So these two, Paragons of virtue and integrity sitting in your studio armed with serious knowledge because they talk Trinidad politics and governance 24 7. There is nobody more knowledgeable in this country than the members of the PEP and I say that without fear of contradiction and you could test it. And you could test it anytime you're ready. Hema asked questions of the group, but this is my problem with Hema because she tries to come across like she is on the moral high ground. Hema Ramki soon was what came to fame, for want of a better word, as Jack Warner sidekick. When Jack Warner was telling, was the name of the guy who write the book? Your mother, go tell your mother, I could spit on you. Hema was his ride or die. When Jack was plundering and pillaging all through CONCACAF and FIFA, Hema was there covering his assets. She was there for that. Hema was Jack Warner, man of business. So she coming across and asking question, questions that would make you think that this woman is somebody that has the authority to ask these questions, but she doesn't. And we're going to straighten that out tonight and let the chips fall where they may.
in this contemptible turn of events. Because we didn't expect this again. Open hands. If you come in halfway to meet us, we will meet you more than halfway. Michelle Davis drive for three hours to get there. Felicia put aside what she was doing to deal with this. And you come into that studio as somebody who has no integrity, no decency, no class. She is respected by no one. She is used by the Sanders because she gets some ratings in the morning. And God is my witness. I don't know why. Because today, ironically, I saw in conversation two of Trinidad's best known morning hosts and both of them, I ain't talk nothing about this. Both of them said, but when are y'all going to bring intelligence back to morning conversation? Both of them say, not me and that. Hema Ramkisun has had over the years some of the most contemptible people sit in front of her to be interviewed. And she's never stood ground for children and the people. Hema Ramkisun has been involved in outright deceit and lies on TV, pure propaganda. We've demonstrated and called them out. Hema covered in the maxi coffee matter. Hema covered for three lion ministers until I beat Keith Rowley like a zandoli out his hole and forced him to come to the public when I told Trinidad and Tobago, Maxi Coffee dead. Well, they had to deal with that. Because they had to, what is saying, law? Bring the body. Bring the body. They had to find a way. They throw a skateboard helmet on him, prop him up, take some pictures and Rowley come out. They say, Maxi ain't dead. But he was drawing salaries under false pretenses. He was not functioning as the minister for the past six months and you were paying him a minister's salary. Worse, the people of Lahaketa Talparo didn't have a member of parliament. And Stuart Young and Fitzgerald Hines and Camille Robinson Regis all lied with the assistance of Hema Ramkisun and the rest of the bandwagon in the media until 14 slapped behind Rowley head Force him to come and admit that he stole, Kid Rowley stole three million dollars from the country to pay his daughter, father-in-law medical bills. We have all of this as fact. And if you put us in government, Rowley will answer for that. Because Rowley didn't have the authority to do that. And Maxi Coffee didn't have the right to receive it. But none of that is this issue. All I'm saying to you is, him a covered Camille. Hema covered Fitzgerald Hines. Hema covered Stuart Young. Until Rowley admit, okay, we lying. We've been lying for six months. And throw Hema under the bus. Throw Hema under the bus. The first thing that she released, that Maxi Coffee sent as a message, as a WhatsApp to her, was a lie. And we proved that it was Fitzgerald Hines. Again, not important to this Stick a pin. Hema Ramkisun does not have decency, integrity, or moral authority. She is at best, at very best, and I want to be as, as kind as I can. She is as, at best window dressing. You cannot have an intelligent conversation with Hema Ramkisun. All she's capable of telling you is, I think. And usually, I think is what the person lying down in her bed tell her he take. That's what tells her what she take. And she could tell her that. And I know Hema well. How well? How well do I know Hema? You can ask Hema who she used to call late in the night when she wanted to kill herself because Randy's wife wanted to kill her. Who she used to call? Who used to have to talk her down? Who used to have to tell a girl? This is how well I know this crazy bitch. Girl, it'll get better. Things will be okay. You'll move on. And I can prove all of this. I can prove all of this. So when Hema sat with my people this morning to attack me, gloves came off. Because you didn't let me come on the show. You hide and you attack two members of the Progressive Empowerment Party who came there just to do
their duty. So you ask questions. Let's take your questions apart. When you're touching all, when you're touching all, we're just touching the ones that exposes how vacuous and inane you are. Hamer and Kisun. Hamer and Kisun said to Felicia Holder, and you can go and watch the video because we've copied and saved it in a million different places. So even if Guardian Media pull it down to hide it, we have it. Hema Ranke soon said to Felicia Holder, your members did not do well in the last general election. She confused Felicia because in the last general election, it was 2015. Now a party was formed in 2017. Felicia must have thought this crazy bitch referring to local government. But Hema was talking about the general election in 2015. She said so. She said your party did not do a good showing in the general election 2015. You're right. We couldn't. We didn't exist. That's one. Two. Hema told Felicia that membership is very important that memberships tell you how much votes you get likes on facebook can't do that well miss ramke soon let me tell you something the congress of the people that was able to get 157,300 votes in 2007 never had more than 20,000 members you can ask ricky garcia and rocky garcia and you can ask prakash ramada whose brother can I remember his name Sue Prakash for lying and saying that the brother and 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 Nalini Dial son and the next one sell the list to the PNM. The UNC has never had more than fifty thousand people. I'd be I'd be impressed if they actually have more than forty thousand people. And these are people that get votes two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. You see, votes don't come from members. Membership don't matter. The membership of a party is like the people in the church who put out the chairs. It really doesn't matter. In the Progressive Empowerment Party, we are building membership because we are trying to pull people from the PNM and the UNC and wake them up and give them a chance at a better government. I want to show them and give them advantages. We're making sure that the membership in this party have privileges. But these people think that your membership equal votes. No, sir. It is your popularity that equals votes. And, and hammer. I don't have brass strap to show to get likes, you know. I don't have cleavage to get shares. Mine has to be based on knowledge, information, what I bring to the table. And I get more likes than most of you. And I get more shares than most of you. And your handlers and the people who were texting you this morning, asking about him, ask them about the membership, knows that what is worrying them the most is as much as they try to pretend that nobody knows Philip Edward Alexander, the PEP, you can't go nowhere. You can't go nowhere in Trinidad. You, you, you see, man? I park, I park here in C3 today. One, two, three, four cars all come to me. There is nowhere in Trinidad Tobago you could go that they don't know about the Progressive Empowerment Party. Two years old with a media blackout. Felicia asked him on. Why does the media block us? That is the Guardian media that a man heard, a next man had an idea, that thought he might form a political party. That information reached Guardian and that get a full page. The Progressive Empowerment Party has had 120 national meetings, 20 rallies. We now have three offices. We have an actual working manifesto. We've led the, the march against the cybercrime bill, you cover none of that. You cover nothing. You could have asked policy questions. You could have asked, but you know what we're doing? And it was a secret, and, he, and Felicia had to say, because this interview wasn't planned. This interview come like a thief in the night. This Fazira was waiting on. Because we're going by Fazira, it remembers. But he must said, when Felicia asked, why you don't ask the PNM and the UNC? Hamer's response was, the PNM and the UNC comes with their numbers. I want to ask Hamer, when? When have they ever come 
with their numbers. Hema Ramke soon. When have you ever asked the UNC or the PNM how much members they have? When? When did that ever happen in the history of politics? And I want to tell you this, because I do media monitoring as one of the businesses I do for government ministers today. Companies today buy information from me as to what is going on in the media. That is why I am so aware. We did media monitoring for the Minister of National Security, Gary Griffith, in 2014 and had him the most knowledgeable minister in this country. So we know that you lie. We know. When Samson Nanton had told the then Prime Minister, people are talking about this. I said, Samson, you lie. Because I was able to show him the talking points of all the media throughout the country in the last seven days. And that item didn't come up once. Not once. They lie. So when Hema responded to Felicia this morning that she don't have to ask the PNM and the UNC because they come with the numbers, she lied. PNM will never disclose that information. Trust me. You would be hard pressed to find out who has that information. I know the UNC have less than 50,000, and I know that because a man is trying to sell me their list. I'm not interested. But I am telling you, a man inside the UNC, because it is the most corrupt and rotten of the two corrupt and rotten parties inside the UNC, they will sell you the mother, and a man is trying to sell me their membership list, and I know it is less than 50,000 people. Now then prove me wrong. And anytime you're ready, anytime again, any media house want to say, PNM, UNC, PEP, bring your printed members lists, and we want to go through it at random and pull out membership forms and call people, we right there with you. When Hema asked today, are you willing to have your finances published? Did she ask that of the finances of the PNM and the UNC? No, she was literally in bed with some of them. She goes out and drinks and lines and hires out with them. Their names published? Where Hema? Where are they published? Because I need to expose you for the failure that you are. And we will save this interview this morning. And we are going to sue Guardian Media. And we are going to sue the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago for our constitutional right. You're going against the wrong man. I promise you that. When we done here, somebody have questions to answer. Two years of no media coverage. We have all of our evidence and we've survived. Not because of you, in spite of you. Hema actually said to Felicia, you saying that the media blocking you, but you're saying you're getting coverage on social media. This empty headed jackass doesn't even know the difference between the two. She somehow thinks Sam got on Facebook too. That is the madness. How could you say the media not covering you when you get in coverage on social media? What the hell does that mean? What does that have to do with you? You have to explain. Why do you think that the media dislikes the PEP? You ask us that? That is like asking us why we think Gerald Ramdi and wife dislikes you. We don't have that information. We would like, not the Ramdi thing, but about the media disliking us. We'd like to know. We'd like to know. We'd like to understand what it takes to make this much wrongdoing appear right. I said today, now let me tell you something, eh? the members of the PEP were satisfied with the interview, you know? She you know, was cool. I spoke to Felicia and I spoke to Michelle, they were okay. They were a little bit roughed up, but they were okay. But I had not seen the video. Because I don't watch national TV. I don't watch it. So I had not seen it. So I was just waiting to see my girls do the interview, I just want to see it. And when I watched the madness that passed
asked for that interview, my half brain mad blood run up in my head. Because these two beautiful citizens who this stink and dirty <laughs> can't tie the shoe. She, she Hema Ramkisur, has only ever cared about Hema. These two people in front of you are giving up life treasure time, exposing themselves to risk, victimization, defamation, character assassination, and worse, for people who don't even know. And you give them pepper, but you're mad. You, you, had to, you had to put God out your thoughts. I tell you that all the time, you want to attack me, come at me. To attack me through my people, I will drag you to hell. You see this bullshit? When, 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 when Barack Obama's wife was busting up Hillary, she didn't know about when they go low, we go high. She didn't know that shit then. But Hillary was a soft target compared to Donald Trump. And when they realized the kind of animal they was dealing with, they had to change tack. And come and tell you when they go low, we go high. But that's bullshit. Because the Obama camp went very low before. But we could stick up in there. To the people who think this bullshit about when they go low, we go high. I promise you, when I finish with them, I will scorch the earth. You do not touch my people. You do not. You won't hear. You don't sacrifice. You don't give up. If we come on your TV station, have some blasted respect because I will put your business in the road. I promise you that. Hema Ramkisun was a tool of the contract mafia before this morning's interview and she remains a tool tonight. She actually asked Hema, any chance of y'all changing the executive before elections? The son of a bitch want to ask if Philip Alexander leaving the party. Because that's the only thing. The only thing prior, I don't know if it was prior or post the media covering us taking part in the local government election. The, the only thing that she covered was when I said I was step, stepping aside. They get a collective hard on because they frayed me like cat frayed holy water. They frayed me. They can't, none of them, not one of them. People love to see me go on Fazir's show because Fazir is very quick, very, very quick. And you have to be good to dance Fazir. And you watch the interviews with me and Fazir, and there are times when you see Fazir fold his hand and sit back. You see that? That is when he accepts and he understands he's been bested now. That is not boast. It is fact. This is what I do. You watch me every single day talk for three hours. Last night, I watched the video and launched on CNC3 with my parents. I went home by my parents and sat in their living room, and they were there. My aging father, my mother, Nervous as hell, because that's what her posture always. But as the interview went on, my father forget that I sitting right there and start to talk to the TV because that's his style. You damn right. When I say they have people living in Maraval next door to the reservoir that don't get water, he say you're oh, damn right. I sitting right here. I sitting right here. This is what I do. I know things. I don't drink, but I know things. This is what I do. And I am more than willing at any point in time to stop or go forward. This is never about me. I keep saying that. I don't need this. Rowley need this. Rowley ugly in the dark, you know. When you watch Keith Rowley, he ain't joke ugly, you know. Kamla, this had to come with a paint roller to put that on Kamla's face, you know. They need this to interfere with people who girl children and boy children. I don't. I'm good just as I am. This mission that we on here is to rescue Trinidad and Tobago. This is not for me and my ego and the stunt 
I have everything I need in the world. Right now, my son begging me, let me go. We're going to watch Man City play Man United. This is the life I wanted to be living at this point of my life. Fighting up and arguing with Anil Roberts and Jack Warren and Rudal Munilal. Come now, man. Look at me. Listen to me speak. They never, the 1% and the contract mafia, Hema tried to say, UNC is for, she said, UNC is for Indian people. PNM is for African people. Where is the Equal Opportunities Commission tonight? That is a hate crime broadcast live on CNC3. That's what I did. A hate crime. UNC and PNM practicing racist segregation of the country. That's what I did. And she said that to first felicitate and make a point. Where are you getting people? All the Indian voting, you ain't saying all the black people, but you're in for a rude surprise. Because they have a lot of people in Trinidad and Tobago who are black and who are Indian who don't care to ever be associated with either the PNM or the UNC. They don't. And there are a whole lot of people who never vote at all, who have woken up, who are saying, finally, I never voted in my life. I never follow a political party. That fellow Philip Alexander, he mouth stink. Sometimes he just talks so arrogant, but damn, he always right. When he talk and you listen and you hear what he say, I walking wrong with that in my head 10 years now. You ever see a plan, a policy, a program of the Progressive Empowerment Party? Anybody can say that can't work? Can't work? Anytime somebody come on social media and say that can't work, Watch the hordes of strangers coming to explain to them not only why it can work, but why it should. You see, she wanted to sell the idea that we were a racist party against the 1%. And she threw that at Michelle Davis. Michelle Davis. You ever watch Brian Lara in the height of his career? When the bowler let go the ball and Brian dropped that shoulder and you know he see the whole run of the ball before the ball reach so that when the bat hit the ball and you're gone. Man ain't even moving. But we have run what? It's gone. Michelle Davis do her that with that question. Out the flicking stands. And him I had to turn around and say, you sure the 1% is not about a type of a race? More hate crime. Good to see CNC tree. You see, Hema and her handlers want to say that Philip Alexander against Syrian people. They want to bring that into the conversation too. But we have many Syrian followers. You see, they have corrupt criminals in this country that make up the contract mafia. But they every creed and race. I tell people that all the time. They have high blacks and high whites and high Chinese and high Syrian rubbing all all here in perfect harmony. And them don't give two shit about skin color and hair texture. Them like to know what Ben's bringing this year. Where we golfing? Who churn? Vacation in with Hootura. And we have a shit about all in all the race war. All of you on the bottom here who talking we time now. Them they just laugh at all you. So hey ma, our 1% in Trinidad and Tobago, it ain't no one race. They have a handful of stink and dirty Syrian people in this country. And they know me. And what is worse, they know, I know what they do and the bumsies twitching because every day that go by that we get a little more popular that looks like there is a little more chance that this political party could pull off that upset they panic in because they know philip edward alexander will follow them around the world or across the plains if it really is flat but he will follow them and get our money Back. No other party, no other political leader has ever said that to you with the firm conviction and the continuous, continuous frequency that I and we do. And here and Felicia, this morning, when you could see, watch the video, when you see that Felicia had enough of Hamer's bullshit, and when Hamer asked her a question, Felicia answered, 
Because we will jail politicians. We will jail businessmen. We come in after Rowley and the AV oil 100 million. Camera switch to Hamer. That's it for the interview. Goodbye. Watch Hamer Ramke soon every day for the next 10 days. And every interview ends with this. Any parting words? Felicia and Michelle got no parting words because AV oil and the hundred million, but Rowley, keep Christopher Mugabe, Sabga Rowley, I want to promise you, brother, light candle, tell Colm, go and give all them Venezuelan voting rights. Tell him, see what you can do to stuff them box for the ABC. See what you can do to organize all that crime and still will cut your ass in North, East, West, and South. And if we do, I will be the one that finally shuts your mouth because we will drag your ass in a court. And you and all your boys will answer for all the shit all you do. I tell you that. Consider this the line in the sand, Keith Rowley. I have a thirst for all you. You have no idea. You and your little partner. And I know you know you know. Somebody say, I Syrian get Philip Vex and that Syrian I will not stop I promise you Trinidad and Tobago today the Progressive Empowerment Party continues to grow forward as the only real political vehicle that would unite all the people Michelle Davis and Felicia Holder tried three separate times to talk plans policies programs ideas Michelle Davis wanted to talk about South Hema wanted to talk Bacchanal. Hema, you want Bacchanal? This nigga. Leave Michelle and Felicia out of it. You want to play bad? Do afraid powder. Call me on your show. Call me out. Let me dance day. But don't play you beating up other people for me. You're a coward and a bully. And like I said this morning, you are living testimony that they have no amount of makeup you could put on a pig to change its inherent nature. I know that there will be people that can't vote for me. But Christ was crucified. They had people who didn't like Gandhi and Martin Luther King. Look at these people. I, am, I, can't, I can't walk in their footsteps. If them had haters, who is me? I know. But I also know one thing. Every time I finish talk, and I go to sleep, I am confident and comfortable that my motives are pure, my hands are clean, and my heart is in the right place. When Reagan Devines asked today about all my members and what they're doing, I had to tell Reagan, this party didn't come in a box. This party didn't come in a box. I built this two members at a time. I built this one Saturday at a time. People came, people joined, people saw. People said, yes, I will follow that lion. Because that one, we're going all the way. The only people who stay in the Progressive Empowerment Party, because make no mistake, work here hard. Work here hard. They just cuss me, you know. They just cuss me. Any joke they just make now. Philip say, we're taking tomorrow off. Ha, 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 ha. We ever going to get a day off? Inside the PEP, our policy is it is not good enough until we win. It is not good. Nothing is good enough until we win. We aim for perfection. They know, all of them know, that we will not stop until we change the conditions that our people have had to suffer. Those, those contract mafia marionette masters that have used people like Hema Ramkisun to spread their bullshit propaganda have made billions on life and debt on suffering and hunger, on children failing in school, and granny lying down on a piss-soaked mattress and can't get lens for the cataract, but we will fix that. I will undo it. I will tear your playhouse down. I want you to hear my words. You know yourself. You know I know you. You know I want to call your name and itching in the back of my throat. I want my people to give me parliamentary privilege so I could expose the lot of all you who just sit down in the front of the church, the temple, and the mosque, and pretend you shit in ice cream when you know and I know all you are is a successful band of bandits, drug traffickers, narcotic importers and transshippers, money launderers. That's what the lot of you are. And in Trinidad and Tobago, there is only one chance going forward. You don't like me? No problem. Make room for those who do. Because we committed to a course of action at the end of the finish line. 
if there are more people in this country who want a better Trinidad and Tobago than they are criminals and co-conspirators, we would win handsomely. The mission is joined. We are here. The Progressive Empowerment Party is going nowhere. So to the media of Trinidad and Tobago, including Barbie doll Hema Ramkisun, show some blasted respect because if you come at us, we will come back at you. Until next time, stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.